Here's a look at today's starting lineup, brought to you by Buick. For the Kansas State Wildcats, Lance Simmons and Mark Dobbins will start it forward. Big Fred McCoy in the middle. The guard, Steve Henson and Lakeith Humphrey. For the Iowa State Cyclones, it'll be Mark Urquhart getting a start today at one forward, teaming with Mark Ball. Victor Alexander in the middle, Mike Bourne and Terry Woods are the guards. Our referees today, Mike Curry, Charlie Green, and Ron Grissom. Stand by the Wildcats and Cyclones right after this timeout. Coliseum in Ames, Iowa, where today the Kansas State Wildcats take on the Iowa State Cyclones, and we're just underway. Fred McCoy with the first basket in the ball game, and it's 2-0 Kansas State until Mark Ball launches, and the rebound comes down to Dobbins. Mark Matthew and Gary Thompson courtside for the final Big 8 regular season game. Dobbins from three-point range, and it bounces over the backboard out of bounds to Iowa State. Today's game is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Sports and Entertainment. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or use of the video or audio portions of this program without the express written consent of Raycom Sports and Entertainment is forbidden. One minute gone in action. First half, 2-0 Kansas State. Mark Ball again. Air ball short. Alexander on the rebound. Third effort to call. Ball that time shot an air ball. I think he was waiting for some contact as he went up. Victor Alexander, uh, good offensive rebound. Iowa State coming with pressure in the backcourt. Alexander had 25 against Kansas State earlier this season, but Iowa State still left Manhattan a loser in that contest. It was the highest scoring affair of the year for the Wildcats. Humphrey shot off the side of the glass. Here's Woods going against Henson. Lays it up, misses. The ball is there to follow. Concentration follow up by Mark Ball. You never think that, that layup is going to be made if you're a trainer. You got to think that it's going to be missed and then go for the follow up. Mark Ball has scored in double figures in 10 of his last 11 games for Iowa State. And in control right now, Kansas State. Steve Henson, the man of the hour. Boy, he had a great game against the Cyclones earlier this year in Manhattan. McCoy down low. One hands it off the glass. Alexander rebounds. Almost taken away by Dobbin. A key matchup in this ballgame is that guard court with Bourne against Henson. I think Bourne has to control him somewhat. Victor Alexander showing that he can go outside as well as inside. Fourth and big eight scoring, third and rebound. Iowa State up by four in the early going, 6-2. And as you already know, Kansas upset Oklahoma State in Stillwater this afternoon, 79-78. So the Wildcats now have a lock on third place in the Big 8 race. Henson from three, misfires, it's out of bounds to Iowa State. Lon Kruger, third year at Kansas State, and the only coach that Johnny Orr has never beaten. That's right. Leonard Hamlin came in here this year and uh, hadn't lost, and uh, he got it. His first run. The thing about Lon Kruger, he's never lost here at Hilton as a player to Iowa State. He hit the three-pointer by Urquhart. 
won three times as a player, twice as a coach. He was beaten here in 71-72 as a player, but that was to Louisville in the regional. And one of the nicest gentlemen you'll ever meet. Mark Urquhart's three-pointer lifts Iowa State to an early seven-point advantage. 9-2 at the 16-25 mark. Urquhart starting in place of Sam Mack. Started at the Colorado game when Mack came down with the flu and Orr decided to stay with the same lineup. Well, it might be something a senior, too, going out and letting him start. But he's earned it. He's really played well off the bench and, uh, and did a good job as a starter at Colorado. Dobbins for three. Off the heel of the eye. Rebound cut down by Bourne. He's fouled by Lakeith Humphrey. First foul of the ball game. Lakeith Humphrey having a good first year. Junior college kid. Well, there's time out on the court. Iowa State by seven. And we'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. You know, I used to think all gasolines were alike. They're not. See, I just got the car I always wanted. Fuel injected and everything. But every morning when I started, it would spit and sputter, and sometimes it would stop altogether. Then I discovered this place, Phillips 66, and high detergent, super clean, unleaded gasoline. Well, after a couple of tank pulls, I discovered something else. The problem wasn't my new car. It was my old gasoline. Clydesdales, the symbol of Budweiser quality, of beechwood aging, the choicest natural ingredients, and a genuine commitment to freshness and taste. One beer lives up to all this. Budweiser. Black Rock, Nevada, and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Black Rock means land sailing, riding the wind across dry desert lakes, and old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp old Milwaukee beer, and smooth, golden old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place, and old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. You know, guys, it doesn't get any better than this. Here's a breakaway basket by Iowa State moments ago that we looked at. Watch Steve Henson defensively cuts across, bothers Terry Woods, although he looks like he has good concentration. Lays it up too hard to the back of the room, the rim, and then ball on the good follow shot. As I said before, when you're trailing in that layup, you've got to assume it's going to be missed, so you're ready to follow it in. Woods in the penetration, stops short, pops it in, and Iowa State has run out to an 11-2 advantage. Iowa State in the 2-1-2 press. This guy with the ball is probably one of the best, one of the best, I think, at controlling a game and the tempo of a game. In the early going, Iowa State with the advantage in the rebounding department, 7-3. Turnaround, up and in by Tony Massiver. And boy, didn't he have a shot the other night against Missouri. Well, it was his only offensive rebound of the game, and it came at the last one and enabled him to beat Missouri by one point. Big win for the Cats. Mark Ball left unattended from 15. Rebound brought down by Reggie Britt. So Ron Kruger going to his bench during that timeout. Britt and Massa both in the ball game now. And his bench did it for uh, Kansas State down in Manhattan. That win there, they had uh, 36 points. Ron Kruger, five and all against Iowa State. Some other scores this afternoon. Kansas, a winner over Oklahoma State. And look at this, even though it was played in Columbia, Missouri gets by Colorado by one, and Michigan, a big winner over Iowa. Mike Bourne from three-point range. Far side rebound comes down to Britt. That was a deep three-pointer by Bourne. He's 0 for 5 in his last three-point attempts. But he's an excellent three-point shooter. Billy Ray Smith just inside the arc, and a foul on the rebound, and it's going to be called on Mike Bourne. And in the women's Big 8 tournament this afternoon, Missouri continues its domination over Iowa State, 87 to 70. And at halftime, Colorado leading Oklahoma, 34-28. Here's a steal by the Cyclones, and then almost and stolen back by Lakeith Humphrey. 
Lakeith Humphrey, a good job right there. You saw him, he just sat with the ball. You cannot roll over and get up in that situation or you got a traveling call. So good presence of mind by Lakeith Humphrey. Britt, off the glass it is. And Reggie Britt, that's his first two of the ball game. Well, Britt had nine points against Iowa State off the bench that first game. Massip in there now, he had 11. So Ron Kruger remembering uh, what they did against Iowa State, and they go going inside. Mike Bourne takes it down to the baseline. Then a tremendous rejection by Tony Massip. Slaps it out of bounds. Well, Johnny Orr has said all week, Gary, that it was the bench strength of Kansas State that cost the Cyclones that game as we take another look here. There's the one-on-one -on -one situation. Henson cuts him off. A little spin move by Bourne. And watch Massive, who's had seven consecutive strong performances off the bench with a block shot in every one of those games. Victor Alexander misfires for the Cyclones. And Lakeith Humphrey drains it. All net for the baseline. And the Wildcats are back to within three. Well, that's got to make Ron Kruger and Kansas State fans feel pretty good to uh, see Lakeith Humphrey hit a shot because he's been struggling all inconsistent with his shooting. Terry Woods, fourth point of the ball game, and Iowa State with a five-point advantage. Late about six minutes here at Hilton Coliseum, a sold-out crowd. Iowa State entering the game 15 and 10. The Wildcats 18 and 8 on the year. Humphrey again, but this time a foul call on Terry Woods. Sam Mack at the scorer's table, ready to come into the Iowa State lineup. 6'10", or rather 6'6", 210-pound sophomore from Dalton, Illinois. He's been a starter most of the year, averaging over 11 points of all game. And Mack has been in double figures, 10 of the last 11 games. Going in, replacing Mark Ball, who takes a seat on the Cyclone bench. And Lakeith Humphrey goes to the line. Good free throw shooter, hitting 88% on the season. And actually, in uh, Big A play, he's better than better than uh, Henson. He's shooting 92.3% in Big A conference play. Henson 91.9. Steve missed two free throws. And they said the crowd at at the Bramley the other night when he missed the first one, it was oh, and when he missed the second, it was like whoo. They couldn't believe it. He missed two in a row. Humphrey with four in the game cuts it back to a three-point lead. 13 minutes to go, first half. Sam Mack. Pops it home, but he was on the line, and it's only two. Well, Britt just backed off of him, but uh, Mac Joni has some range. There was six earlier this week, missed practice, did play in Colorado off the bench, and an outstanding performance, 16 points. Follow him coming in the second half when Iowa State got in some trouble. Nice shot by Billy Ray Smith. Keeping the Wildcats close, and Woods has the ball go off his foot. Picked up by the Wildcats. Here comes Henson. Nice double fake. Puts it up and in. And Henson's in the book today with his first two. Great double a pump right there because he could feel Woods behind him and he double pumped it underneath. And that's a difficult shot. Alexander, the cutter down low, drawing a crowd. Still gets the shot away. And a foul call. Foul is going to be on number 42, Tony Massive. First, here's Victor with the ball down inside. One dribble. Keep getting covered here. And here's Massive now comes over to help. He goes up and gets the foul right there as uh, Victor Alexander kind of warded off with the left hand. Alexander at the line with a pair. 65% shooter on the year. And short on the first. You know, in the first meeting between these two teams, Kansas State walked away a winner, 104-89 on February 9th. But in that ball game, Iowa State lost while shooting 50% from the field. And the Cyclones are 10-3 and three in games when they shoot 50% or better. Quickly down. Britt, offensive foul. Offensive foul, charge. Foul number one on Reggie Britt, third team foul. A chance to look at it as the Cats have battled back. Here's Reggie Britt coming with the ball. He's taking it all the way. He makes up his mind right here. Instead of planning and making a move one way or the other, he just goes straight ahead. Max sliding a little bit. Sometimes you have to stand in there and uh, take it head on. Uh, Mac turned his body just a little bit. Sometimes you get a block call out of that if you turn. Kansas State now a little bit more aggressive defense. That's not Urquhart's shot there. I think Johnny Orr. Uh, Urquhart's uh, more in that 15, uh, 15, 16 foot range. Sam Mack from 15. All 
Pressure again being applied by Iowa State in the backcourt. Trying to go inside the brick. Cut down by Mack and Alexander. Here come the Cyclones. They'll push it up if they can. Mack strong to the hoop. Rebound tipped out by Alexander and saved by Urquhart. Kansas State a pretty strong physical team inside right now. In that first game between these two, uh, the rebounding advantage was only one. And Iowa State has to stay close on the board. Victor goes one-on-one -on, -one on Massive. And the rebound. Skied four by Reggie Britt. Ron Kruger told us before the game he didn't know what to expect from his team. He gave him a couple of days off without practice. Yeah, Rick. And as Britt goes up, he gets the basket and the foul. And then last night, Kansas State had travel problems. They didn't get into Ames till about midnight last night. Right here, watch Henson right here come across. They pick for him. Borden gets picked off. He goes up for the shot. And watch the presence of mine. He hits it, and you see Mack turning his head. And what will happen so many times, what caused that with Mack is Britt takes it up and gets the bucket, is that when you go up to shoot, the defense starts to react and go to the boards, and Mack turned his head, and Henson just drops it down. A good look by Henson. Fred McCoy checks back into the Kansas State lineup now, as does Carlos Diggins. And here comes Dobbins. Also in for Kansas State. Mike Bourne, by the way, was replaced by Mark Ball just a moment ago during that replay. And Mike Bourne has been nursing a bad ankle. And we're going to check and see what the status is of Bourne in the locker room. Reggie Britt, four points today, can make it a three-point play, but doesn't. Dobbins scurries after the rebound, and Kansas State now with a second opportunity. They can take the lead right here if they fire a three-pointer. But there's a three-second violation called inside on Dobbins. So there's timeout on the court with 10.22 to go in the first half. It's a two-point game here at Hilton Coliseum. BMW 325iS, Mercedes 560SL, outstanding, but compare them to Riata by Buick. Riata has more standard luxury features than BMW, but thousands less, and Riata's contemporary styling is less than half Mercedes price. In fact, Consumers Digest calls Riata one of the best buys in domestic cars. Riata by Buick. The competition hails by comparison. For top quality high detergent unleaded gasoline which keep up your car's fuel injectors and keep your car running clean. Next time, fill her up at Phillips 66. 10.22 to go, first half, two-point barn burner here in Hilton Coliseum. Nothing wrong with Mike Bourne, just had to go to the locker room for a moment, and he'll be back in action here momentarily. The turnovers here in the early going. Kansas State turned it over five times with Mark Ball hits a bucket, Iowa State two. Kansas State only turned it over seven times against Missouri in that one point win Wednesday night. Four points in the ball game for Ball, and Iowa State by four. Terry Woods now the job to cover up on Henson. And that is a job. Here's McCoy going against Alexander, but it's pinned against the glass by Mack temporarily, and it's goaltending. So score two for Fred McCoy. Well, they've been challenging Victor Alexander. I think their game plan is trying to get him some foul trouble. They've been going to McCoy a lot. But you see Mack coming across, and with that much space between uh, the ball and the shooter, you're going to get goaltending almost every time. Mark Ball tries to go baseline, but he's too far under, and then his pass is picked off. Good defensive play by Reggie Britt. Kansas State can go ahead here. Hanson wide on the three-pointer. Rebound to Alexander. And the Cyclones now on the run. Woods into heavy traffic. Contact, but a foul is called on Woods. Charging. And that'll be foul number two on the little junior point guard for Iowa State. Woods taking the ball right here. Watch it, that little change up right there and then penetrate. He goes up, instead of going straight up, watch his body float. Henson, a good job, stays right there, and that's what we we're talking about earlier. You stand in there and take it head on, you're going to get that offensive call almost every time. Good look at Johnny R. in his 23rd season, but his career record against Kansas State is 5 and 11. He has not had a great deal of success against the Wildcats, especially Lon Kruger. He is winless against Lon. 
Kansas State scored 104 points in that first ball game, but that was at Bramley. This Temple right now is just what they'd like, and particularly when they play on the road. And Henson forces some shots, but this time he gets the roll. Oh, that's a tough one. Second time the game has been tied today. It's not at 20 all. Alexander goes up, gets the basket, and draws the foul. The foul will be on Reggie Britt and give two more to the big sophomore center for the Cyclone. Britt talking to himself right there, discussing with the play. I will take getting it down a little quicker, and this is what they'd like to do is get some shots off the transition game. Good fill, secondary break by Alexander, and a nice job of taking it away from the defensive man as Britt gets him on the arm. Watch here. Alexander goes up, uses his ball. Britt right there gets him on the hand, and the strength of Alexander is he moves it completely to his right hand and puts up the one-hand shot. That was the second foul on Reggie Britt. So Lance Simmons comes in to replace him now. And Mike Bourne also checks into the Cyclone lineup, replacing Terry Woods. Well, Keith Humphrey in for the Wildcats for Steve Henson, giving him a rest. Alexander at the line, one of two today. And Henson doesn't get a whole lot of rest. He's averaging 39.2 minutes a game in conference play. Victor Alexander leading all scores with eight in the ball game. He has scored in double figures 17 straight games. And Kansas State uh, running a little motion. They'll try and get there. Isolated down inside. Traveling call against Lance Simmons. Simmons. Uh, has really given Kansas State a lift offensively in the last uh, six ball games. He's had 51 points. Four of those six games, he had 11 points in each of them. Nice pass, her card into ball, and then a foul on the shot. Ball really had to work to get that one away. Ball has been putting up some off balance shots here in this first half. Foul is on big Fred McCoy, and you can see that he's not too happy with himself. Only the first foul on Fred. There's, a, there's Ball right there, starts to a hook, but didn't quite get it, and McCoy comes across. I think he got him with the with the hand down low. Put it on Ball's body. Ball's the second leading free throw shooter for Iowa State this year, hitting 81%. And Iowa State, good from the line as a team, 73% on the season. Well, Kansas State right behind in second place, 71.8%. We've got the top three free throw shooters in the conference in this game, and uh, Henson, Lakeith Humphrey, and uh, Mike Borg. One, two, three. But Ball is only 50% on this trip. Iowa State by four, down to the eight-minute mark. Humphrey working with Carlos Diggins. Dobbins drives the baseline, trapped there. Shovels off the pass to Simmons, puts it up. Misses the first attempt and the second tipped out. A tough one for Simmons right there. Just point blank. Just put it up too hard. Hit the back of the rim. If that's where he's effective. Down now inside. We're going to have traveling on Mac. Steps on Mac. So with 7.41 left to play first half. We'll be back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. Sure, I still use my old gas card. Especially since I learned that cash and credit are the same low price at Phillips 66. Phillips 66. Cash or credit. Same low price. Whether it's blistering hot or freezing cold, you need a quality motor oil you can depend on. Drop Arctic motor oil in the distinctive gold bottle. It's more than a fair weather friend. Phillips 66. Good things for cars and the people who drive them. Simmons takes it up, pumps it up twice, and you see he puts it too hard off the rim. It comes off, and a lost opportunity for the Cats right there. 
Field goal shooting this afternoon. Kansas State hitting 50%. Iowa State 45%. And full court pressure being deployed again by Iowa State. Kansas State has the luxury against pressure. They can go with two guys, Henson or Lakeith Humphrey. And a lot of the time, they'll go with Lakeith Humphrey. He's a little quicker. And also saves Henson. Uh, Norman then comes back into the play on this offensive end and controlling the ball. Henson working very hard with and without the ball. This time a leader in the lane and he gets the roll. And Steve Henson has his sixth point of the day. Well, he tries to get that uh, foul. That's a couple of times. He's really tried to draw the foul, I think, as he's, but he's ended up with the soft roll and uh, with two buckets. Victor Alexander misfires. Dobbins down with a big rebound for the Wildcats. Kansas State can get into it here, and they take the lead with a three-pointer. Well, hits it a good three-point shooter, 46% on the year. He shot 140 of them this season coming into this ball game, hit 65. And a foul away from the ball inside. Some pushing and shoving. And it's going to be tacked on Lance Simmons. Well, that's one of Lance's problems. Uh, he's, we said he's been effective for Kansas State, but he's uh, prone to get in foul trouble. Inside to Alexander, working baseline, one hands it up and in. Boy, oh, that's a soft touch. Ten in the ball game for Alexander, leading all scores, and Iowa State reclaims the lead. Boy, if Steve Henson gets hot, watch out. He's a tremendous outside three-point shooter. This kid can shoot it from three, too. Uh, Dobbins. Humphrey going in and out. Simmons working between Sam Mack. Bangs it off the glass. Rebound. And a foul call on Simmons. And that will be two quick fouls on Simmons. Now Ron Kruger is satisfied with one thing. That's where he's getting the ball to Simmons because Simmons, Lance can work down in this position. Does a lot of footwork. You watch him fake, step in here, come through, get the ball up. Now right there, he's just not delivering the shot right now. And then he comes over the top, picks up his second foul. Well, that's the seventh team foul now against the Jayhawks. Simmons goes out. Tony Massip comes in. The one and one goes into effect, and Sam Mack will be at the line for Iowa State. 68% from the line on the year. Let's see what, uh, as you look at Sam Mack, how Kansas State uh, will line up defensively the next time with Massif and McCoy both in there to see who spots up on Victor Alexander. Johnny Orr and Lon Kruger tense on this one. But actually, it really doesn't have much bearing now on the Big A tourney seeds because Kansas State will open up next week against Kansas. And Iowa State now, the fifth seed, will play Oklahoma State in the first round of the Big A tournament. Well, that'll be rubber matches for uh, both games because Kansas and Kansas State split this year, winning on the, each other's court. Great move by Steve Henson. And he has 11 in the ball game already. Only had 19 in that first ball game. We talked about it. You have to control Henson somewhat. Nice feed inside to Sam Mack. Victor Alexander, nice pass from the top side. Five and a half minutes to play first half. Iowa State by three. Henson down on the run. Oh, he's lighting her up now. Well, you get the trap situation there. No responsibility as you move to areas. And that time Henson's able to free up and get the basketball. Hanson with 13 in the ball game. Urquhart goes down baseline to Mack. Try to go inside the lane, but we have got three seconds called against Iowa State. They'll turn it over to the Wildcats. Terry Woods checks back in now for Iowa State. And Mark Urquhart will go out for a rest. Well, here's Victor Alexander as he comes to the top side this time because they've been doubling him down underneath. Now he'll float down. Last time he hit the pass, and ever watch all the congestion down in here. Here comes Mack through with the ball. Back to the side, you see Victor camped in there too long. Three seconds off. Humphrey works off the move, lets it fly, and it's right in. And for Lakeith, his second basket of the day, six points. He has two from the line. 
And Kansas State leads for the second time this afternoon. Well, this guard do is getting 38 percent of the offense for Kansas State. This is the best guard combination offensively they've had since the mid 70s when it was Mike Evans and Chucky Williams. And ironically, these two kids are wearing those same numbers, 10 and 12. Mike Evans, uh, of course, number 10 in his day. Chucky Williams, number 12. Well, the lead has changed in this ball game six times already. We're coming down near the four-minute mark. Inside of McCoy, going against Alexander. Partially deflected. It'll be retained by the Wildcats. Mike Corey saying the ball was deflected, but you can see Kansas State, what they're doing. They're trying to challenge Victor Alexander down inside, and so far, Victor's done a good job of staying away from fouls. McCoy set his back, lets it go. Mark Ball throws it off the knee of the Wildcat. Out of bounds, Iowa State, and an alert defensive play by Mark Ball. Well, the sophomores, both Mack and uh, Ball for Iowa State, have played well since they settled into the starting lineup when uh, Iowa State lost uh, Robinson and Spinks. Born open from three-point range. There's what Iowa State moves right there. They got Born's first field goal. And now there's time out on the court and some discussion going on. It's going to be, I think this is a warning on letting the ball go. Right. Called a mark ball. Warning issued by Mike Corey. Iowa State now by three. You know, and the thing about it is, uh, from a Mark Ball standpoint there in Iowa State, you don't have to worry about Kansas State running out on that type of play. They're content to play half-court basketball, as I said before, particularly on the road here against Iowa State. They'll run when the opportunity is there. Henson, quick release, and it's good again. And he has 15 in the first half. He had 18 in the first half against Missouri. What a couple of games he's having. And back from long range. Rebound. Picked up by Woods. Knocked out of bounds. Kansas State basketball. Oh, this Steve Henson's just getting better and better. Official timeout. Well, this last shot coming up. Watch oh, Terry Woods coming in hustling. Looking for the steal. Can't get it. Comes off of there. Loses out of bounds. And Kansas State will play it in. Iowa State with a one-point lead. 34-33. Like your cars big, smooth, and powerful. This ought to be your next one. The Pontiac Bonneville. And now with $1,000 cash back, there's no reason to wait. Experience a new Bonneville today. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. Gillette Atra Plus system with the Luber Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. Accommodations arranged through Hilton, the Hilton Honors Program, which offers frequent travelers the fastest route to a free hotel stay. Call 1 800 Hiltons for details. Travel arranged through Eastern, proud to lead all other major airlines in on-time performance for the third consecutive month. Eastern, we've got your ticket to an on-time arrival. Well, it's a one-point ball game here at Hilton Coliseum, and we have 3.14 to go first half. You look at Lon Kruger. And Steve Henson is really having a quick start here this afternoon. 15 points leading all scores. Alley-oop inside of McCoy. Backhands it up and in. Great move by Fred McCoy. Kansas State doing a nice job at getting the ball inside. And that opens up when all of a sudden you got a guy like Henson that turns it loose from the outside and got a travel. Traveling called on Sam Mack. St. Raycom Sports and Entertainment proudly presents the 10th Annual Emmy Awards for Sports, a celebration to honor achievement in sports television and a chance for you to relive this year's greatest moments in sports, those moments that held you on the edge of your seat. The 10th Annual Emmy Awards for Sports, coming this April. Check your local listings. 
Two and a half minutes to go. First half, McCoy working inside against Alexander. One hands it up. And the rebound recovered by McCoy. Up and in. And he's fouled by Alexander. McCoy did a great job of fighting the offensive glass that time, coming back after he missed his first shot. Finally draws one because they've been really challenging uh, Victor Alexander. Down underneath, that's his first. That's team foul number five on Iowa State. McCoy with eight today. No good on the free throw. And Iowa State comes down quickly. Down the ball. Iowa State fans maybe want a little contact call there, but no damage. Born from three. In and out. Look, this is where Iowa State's going to need some help. The guards so far haven't been delivering. They've been good at home offensively, but so far off this whole start, there they get beat by Woods. Sixth point of the afternoon for Terry Woods, and Iowa State back to within one now. Henson at work. Strong down with a rebound. Here's Woods in and out. Strong rebound by Mack that time, but Woods a little quick, and I think that's one of the areas when you're playing a Kansas State team, it's a tendency to hurry up when you come down on offense, and you have to have good patience against this Kansas State club on your half-court offense. There was no doubt on that call. Sam Mack collides with Steve Henson. Foul number two on Mack. This year's Phillips 66 Big 8 postseason basketball tournament is sold out, but that doesn't mean you have to miss all the action. The Raycom Sports Network will be bringing you the tournament play-by-play -play live from Kansas City on March 10, 11, and 12. Check your local listings for the games to be seen in your area, and here's the way they'll start. Friday's first round pairings. And the first game, Oklahoma State against Iowa State at 12 noon next Friday. Kansas State by one, minute and a half to play first half. Inside of McCoy, back outside. Shot up, no good by Billy Ray Smith. Rebound down to Iowa State. Kansas State doing a good job of getting back on defense. Uh, Iowa State would like to get in transition and pick up some easy baskets. And as Mike Bourne cuts to the basket, he's fouled by Reggie Britt. Iowa State coming down on the break. You see Kansas State back. Britt comes in there and just grabs him a little bit on the arm. And you see the official, I think it's Charlie Green, coming in and making the call. Lance Dobbins, or rather, correction, Mark Dobbins, comes off the bench now to replace Britt. That's the third foul in the ballgame on Britt. And Mike Bourne will be at the line for Iowa State, the top free throw shooter for the Cyclone. And as we said, uh, three of the top ones in the Big A Conference right here today, and Mike Bourne being the number three spot. That's called getting the roll, huh? There's a lot of rolls out here today. Must be uh, friendly rims. Mark Urquhart comes into the lineup now for the Cyclones, replacing Sam Mack. You know, since Hilton Coliseum opened here in 1971, Kansas State has won 11 of 17 games in this arena. The best of all Big 18. Here we give the ball to Keith Humphrey. Uh, Mike Bourne overplaying the Henson. I think that's what he has to do right there. I think some other people are going to have to drop off and help inside, but uh, Henson is so explosive. I think you got to try to keep the ball out of his hands as much as you can. Humphrey tried to rocket a pass inside of McCoy, and it goes off everybody's hands. Last to touch at Iowa State. Ron Stewart, uh, assistant coach, can't stay on the right, along with Ron Kruger, down on one knee, observing play. Shot clock at 20, game clock at about 39, so there is quite a differential. Mike Bourne really staying face to face with Henson on the far side. Humphrey over here in trouble. Shot clock down to two. Henson, frantic throw. Oh, oh what a shot by Henson. Boy, he's in trouble and puts it up, but you got to credit him with the awareness of the clock. That's the key thing there. Then he gets the gravy of getting the three-point shot in. Iowa State trying to get off the final shot. It's last touched by 
Kansas State. They'll get another shot at it. Lon Kruger doesn't agree. He thinks it just came off the rim. We'll check it in a moment. 4.6 seconds. Woods in traffic. Gets one over to Alexander. Lays it up and in. At the buzzer. It'll count. And it is tied at 40 here at halftime. Well, you can see the look that Lon Kruger is giving one of the officials right here. They didn't believe that it should have been Iowa State basketball. What a final 30 seconds of play. Let's take another look at Steve Henson. Two seconds on the shot clock, and Henson knows it. That's, that's the thing that uh, makes this play, is uh, the awareness of Henson. That's why he's the great player and the playmaker that he is. And nothing but net there with a the three-pointer. Tremendous shot, tremendous player. It's intermission, and we're tied at 40. Back with more in just a moment. Big A basketball is being brought to you by Phillips 66, good things for cars and the people who drive them. By Gillette. By Pontiac. And by True Value Hardware. For the pride, for the greed, for the love, and for the team, for the sweat, for the drive, for the reason, reason you strive. For all you do, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood aged Budweiser. This Bud's for you, this Bud's for you. I'm not going to sit here and tell you AT&T's long distance rates are competitive. I'm going to prove it to you. If you're with another long distance company and your business spends at least $120 a month, call us about our discount calling plans, AT&T Pro Watts. If you qualify, here's the deal. We'll pay for the sign-up fee, the switch over charge, and if within three months you're not completely satisfied with our quality, value, and price, we'll even pay to switch you back. So what do you got to lose? Even the call is free. 1-800-222-0400. Pick up the phone. Call us. What you get out of a project depends on what you put into your workshop. So get Master Mechanic Power Tools from True Value Hardware Store. Like their high-speed finishing sander for just $44.99. Or their one-third horsepower variable speed jigsaw for only $34.99. Or get a Master Mechanic one and three-quarter horsepower plunge router for just $65.99. And their seven and a quarter inch circular saw for only $39.99 at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. 1988, it was a very regal year, with the Buick Regal nameplate outselling every other midsize coupe in America, including Thunderbird, Cougar, and LeBaron GTC. Why was Regal such a smashing success? I guess you could say that we Americans know a good thing when we drive it. Buick Regal, the best-selling midsize coupe in 1988. The great American road belongs to Buick. It's tied at 40 here at halftime between the Kansas State Wildcats and the Iowa State Cyclones. And hello, everybody. Mark Matthew here at courtside along with Gary Thompson. And Steve Henson has had a fast start in the past two ball games. 18 first half points against Missouri. 18 points today. And the last three were dandies, Gary. Nothing more sensational than that last one that he got up because it was from long range. That's beyond NBA three-point range. Watch him right here. But he came to the ball, and as we talked about as the half ended, he knew what the time was on the clock. Watch that thing. Big momentum play could have been for Kansas State as you see it again. Looks like it came from the Kansas State <laughs> bench. <laughs> I was going to say, a big momentum play, except that Iowa State kind of negated by going back down and, and Victor Alexander getting a, a basket right at, as the gun went off. Victor Alexander with 15 leading the Cyclones in the first half. We'll have halftime stats and more coming up on our halftime program in just a moment. We'll be back to Hilton Coliseum right after this timeout. Clydesdales, a symbol of Budweiser quality, of beechwood aging, the choicest natural ingredients, and a genuine commitment to freshness and taste. One beer lives up to all this. Budweiser. 
getting through college can be a pretty tough climb. To succeed, you need money, and you need the right abilities. You can find them both in the Army. If you qualify, you could earn more than $25,000 with the GI Bill and the Army College Fund. And you could develop the confidence, judgment, and self-discipline it takes to make it to the top in college and beyond. When you race Formula One cars at speeds exceeding 200 miles an hour, you're bound to gain a great deal of valuable information about engine technology. You might expect us to keep information like that under lock and key. But we prefer to keep it someplace a little more accessible. The Acura Integra Sports Sedan. For clean, premium, unleaded gasoline. This week's Phillips 66 Big 8 Conference Player of the Week honors go to Missouri freshman guard Anthony Peeler. All the week, Peeler scored 51 points, had 22 rebounds, and 12 assists. He tied his career high with 22 points in a game against Nebraska. Congratulations to Missouri's Anthony Peeler, this week's Phillips 66 Big 8 Conference Player of the Week. Ever feel like you're getting nickeled and dimed to death? Take my old gas station. If I used their credit card, a dollar bought 96 cents worth of gas. For me, that four cents added up to about 50 bucks a year. So now I come here, Phillips 66. I get high detergent, super clean, unleaded gasoline for the same low price, cash or credit. I give them a dollar, they give me a dollar's worth of gas. This week's Phillips 66 classroom champion is Iowa State softball outfielder Jenny Condon. Jenny hails from Edina, Minnesota, and she finished the 88th season as one of only two players to play in all 60 games. She led her squad with a whopping 372 batting average. Jenny's a sophomore with an open option major. Iowa State's Jenny Condon, the Phillips 66 classroom champion. Phillips 66 is proud to salute those athletes who excel in academics as well as athletics. And Missouri guard Sandy Profet was awarded the Women's Big 8 Conference Player of the Week honors. The 5'8 senior scored 26 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists in an 88-74 loss to Oklahoma State. Then scored 31 points with 5 rebounds in the Tiger victory over the Sooners. Sandy Profet, the Big 8 Women's Player of the Week. Next Friday at noon, the Big 8 Phillips 66 Conference Tournament begins in Kansas City, and the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network will be there to bring you the action. The first game Friday will pit the number four seed against number five, followed by a game between the number one seed and the number eight seed. Then the evening session will pit the number two seed against number seven, and that will be followed by third place against six. The winners of those games will face each other in the semifinals on Saturday at one, Sunday, those winners go head-to-head -to, -head to find out who will get the automatic berth for the NCAA postseason tournament when they play for the championship of the Phillips 66 Big A Tourney. Sunday at 3 on the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Check your local listings. Iowa State's Ted Haynes, ranked second in the nation in the floor exercise, was named the Big A Male Gymnast of the Month for February. For the women, Gymnast of the Month honors went to Oklahoma's Tatiana Figueredo who is ranked 14th in the nation. Congratulations to both Ted and Tatiana for their outstanding achievements. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Logan Pass, Montana and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Logan Pass means trailblazing, exploring the wilderness of Glacier National Park. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place, an Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. Guys, it just doesn't get any better than this. Hi, I'm Max Holmes, and I want to talk to you about buying your first new car. If you're like most people, reliability and affordability are what you're looking for. That's why a new Hyundai is the perfect car for you. We're Iowa's first Hyundai dealer, and we have eight models priced under $8,000. Add to that a list of more than 70 standard features, and you've got yourself the perfect first car. Superb styling and Hyundai affordability. If I were looking for my first new car, this is the kind of value I'd want. No one knows my livestock like I do. And I know every animal on the place. 
I know what it takes to run a successful operation. Hard work. Done the right way every day. That same old grind makes my bread and butter. So you better believe I only work with products and people who work the way I do. It, it, it's done. Five TV's Metro Team, keeping you in touch. We take great pride in our basketball program at Kansas State University. From Nichols to Ahern to Bramlage Coliseum, winning basketball is a K-State tradition. As a former student and now coach, I am even prouder of K-State's academic excellence. K-State has fantastic students, outstanding faculty, and the friendliest campus on the plains. This is why we attract quality people as student athletes. Sure, we win our share in basketball, but to me, the big winners are those who earn their degree at Kansas State University. The seeds have been planted to grow a world-class program in agricultural biotechnology at Iowa State University. Plant molecular biologist Robert Thornburg is using genetic engineering to transfer pest resistance characteristics from one plant into others. Thornburg is one of Iowa State University's new generation of biotechnology researchers. Through vision and innovation, they are helping Iowa grow a brighter economic future. Now let's take a look at today's Gillette halftime statistics. In the field goal department, Kansas State hitting at a 55% clip, Iowa State 46%. And Iowa State, when they are shooting less than 50% on the year, they're 5 and 7. Free throw percentage favoring Iowa State right now. Three point goals, one for the Cyclones, two for the Wildcats. Rebounding favoring Iowa State, turnovers even, and the fouls eight to six. Let's check some of the individual scoring leaders and leading everyone this afternoon. Steve Henson in the ball game. Listen to this. He has hit eight of 11 shots from the field today. 18 points, Gary. He's doing a super job. We only had two of the, he had both the three point uh, shots for Kansas State. Victor Alexander's been responding on the other end. Uh, he's had six for 12, uh, 14 total points to there. Sam Mack, a good job for Iowa State. Coming off the bench at eight points, three out of five, and, and three rebounds along with it. So the guard court, 11 points. Uh, out of Woods and, well, 10 points out of Woods and uh, Bourne. And I think they're going to have to have more from that outside uh, outside shooting those guards in this ballgame. Been sort of a two-man show so far, Alexander and Hanson. And that's today's halftime stats brought to you by Gillette. Well, it's tied at 40, and we've got a second half of basketball coming up your way in just a moment, so don't go away. Get reliable help around the house with electrical products from True Value Hardware Stores. Like the 48-inch shop light by American Fluorescent for just $8.88. Improved connections with this Electropack 7 outlet center, only $5.99. The Master Electrician 25-foot trouble light with circuit breaker is just $9.99. And the heavy-duty TrueGuard plug-in timer is only $5.49 at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Center. You may not see me in the sports pages, but I play for one of the world's largest teams, Days Inns, the fastest growing hotel chain in the world. Our most valuable players are the 50 Days Inn owners right here in the Big 8 Conference. They'll give you a great room at a great price with restaurants, pools, lounges, even meeting rooms. When it comes to great prices and great locations, see why the professional traveler stays with us. This long row of junkers is no match for the Ford Bigfoot. But here's a real test. Can a regular Ford 4x4 drive over it carrying a Chevy and towing the 14,000-pound Bigfoot? The Ford starts clawing over the jagged metal with a Chevy on board and towing Bigfoot. Ford is the only pickup with four choices of multi-port fuel-injected engines to give you the power you want when you need it. Yes, the Ford triumphs over the twisted junkers in spite of its tremendous load. Ford, the best-built American trucks, eight years running, built Ford Tough. Big Eight Basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66 Super Clean Premium Unleaded Gasoline. By Ford. And by Days Inn's Hotels and Suites. And don't forget, Raycom Sports and Entertainment proudly presents the 10th Annual Emmy Awards for Sports. A celebration to honor achievement in sports television and a chance for you to relive the year's greatest moments in sports. The 10th Annual Emmy Awards for Sports, coming this April. Be sure and check your local listings.
And sports fans here in Ames have a chance to witness one of the premier Big 8 championships tomorrow when the 55th annual Big 8 Conference Wrestling title will be decided in the ISU Armory. Plenty of tickets remain for the Big 8 Wrestling Championship tomorrow in Ames. And of course, coming up next week, this year's Phillips 66 Big 8 postseason basketball tournament. It's sold out, but that doesn't mean you have to miss the action. The Raycom Sports Network will be right here, bringing you tournament play live from Kansas City on March 10, 11, and 12. Check your local listings for the games to be seen in your area. Game number one, Friday at 12 noon, Iowa State, Oklahoma State. We are tied at 40 here at Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa. Kansas State and Iowa State ready for the second half. And I tell you one thing, Gary, Kansas State Wildcats have really done a job this year. 18 and 8 after losing four starters from last season. You know, Lon Kruger right there has to be a strong candidate for Big 8 Coach of the Year. Well, I don't think anybody expected uh, Kansas State probably to be where they are right now. And uh, great job to, and should be, I think, uh, back in the NCAA. Kansas State will have the basketball when we start the second half. And it is also the last half of regular season play right here. We mentioned Kansas State uh, a lock on third. Now Iowa State playing for the win. They can win. They would tie for fourth. But of course in the in the uh, tiebreaker they finished fifth as far as the tournament. And of course Iowa State needs a win to preserve its NCAA tournament hopes. Henson tried to throw it to Dobbins, who was cutting, but they misread the signals, and it goes out of bounds. So Iowa State has a chance to go on top, first here in the second half. And Iowa State looks inside. Uh, they got Victor on the clear side. Cutter, Urquhart, fade away, net. Well, Urquhart only three points in the first half, but he had four assists. In his last four ball games, he's had eight points in each of those games. Three of those coming off the bench. Of course, he got his start against uh, Colorado on Wednesday night. Here's Lakeith Humphrey. Fade away. And he's on target. So both these teams starting out red hot in the second half. Humphrey now has got eight in the ball game. Alexander takes a couple steps. And traveling is called. We'll give you a chance to look at it. You look at Alexander coming back right here. Pass goes inside. Alexander. Ooh, I, don't Hell, I don't know. It looked like uh, he stutter stepped with the right foot, but it looked like his pivot foot was solid. Yeah, never moved that left one. 42 all. One minute gone here in the second half. McCoy backs his way into traffic, launches over Alexander. Rebound loose and picked up by little Terry Woods. Woods going against Humphrey, stops and fires. And Woods with eight points in the ball game. And Woods uh, doing a lot of penetrating today, taking the ball uh, inside. Henson on the move from three. And a foul on the rebound. Called on Lance Simmons, his third in the game. And watch Kansas State. They'll do a lot of picking right here. They set a pick, and Henson drives off of it. Gets the open shot. You see Woods come into position to rebound, and then Woods probably been a six, uh, six, five guys, some strength. That foul probably wouldn't have been a call, but with Woods, Simmons just knocked him over. Inside to Mark Ball, fade away. And Iowa State red hot here in the second half. And Ball has been shooting the ball extremely well. His last two ball games, he's 16 to 26. 8 for 13 in each of those games against Nebraska and Colorado. Reggie Britt checks in at the scorer's table for the Wildcats. McCoy against Alexander. And a foul on Alexander. That will be the second foul on the big sophomore for Iowa State. We're working Alexander over. They started at the start of the game, taking the ball right inside. Of course, they're taking it to McCoy, who averages 16 points a ball game and ninth in the Big 8 in scoring. Reggie Britt into the lineup. Replacing Lance Simmons and McCoy at the line, shooting two. He's 0 of 1 so far in the game. Britt that just came in, came off the bench in that first half, two for two and three rebounds. You know, Mark, Kansas State has kept the crowd out of the game. They tried to get in at this last series down a little bit, and then uh, McCoy 
goes to the line. But uh, the crowd, uh, Kansas State has done a great job of keeping the crowd out of this basketball game. And this can be quite a crowd in Hilton Coliseum. Woods takes the shot, then goes inside Alexander. One on one on McCoy. Draws the foul, but doesn't get the roll. Turnabout is fair play. He's look at Mike Corey coming up and uh, calling a foul on McCoy, number 44. This time, uh, Victor Alexander goes down inside and challenges uh, Big Fred McCoy. Here's another look at this play to see from another angle. Victor Alexander working himself in, and he takes the ball away right there. The kids these nowadays can do that so well, taking that ball away. The original area, they're going up with the shot, and that's what draws the foul. Alexander with 15 points on the afternoon. And Iowa State with a four-point advantage. 17.30 to play. Henson, wide open alley. Drives with a nice move. And Henson now has got his 20th point in the book. When you, it's so intelligent. You can see him just threading his way right there for the basket. He was waiting for the guy to pick up on the block, and he just felt his way along. But this time he gets a piece of Mike Bourne as Mike fires from long range. It was only a two-point basket for Bourne and counting. Watch there, Bourne gets it. You see definitely inside. Henson coming at him and gets the hand uh, just as the ball has been released. Mike Corey right on the call. First foul of the game on Henson. And Bourne will go to the line. Two of two so far today. <laughs> three of three. <laughs> Iowa State on top by five. It was knotted at 40 at intermission. Henson, another great move. And he gets a whistle. The foul will be on Iowa State. Henson, we said, had to take over this year and provide offense. He's done in that. You see the penetration. He gets by board, goes in, turns him loose, and then uh, Mark Baugh, number 41, comes in. Ron Grissom coming in and make the call, and Henson goes down. He doesn't mind it. He'll take all the punishment he can if he go to that free throw line. Look where he leads the, the Wildcats in. Scoring, assists, free throw percentage. And when he goes to the free throw line, <laughs> You might as well bet the farm on it. Sam Mack checks back in now for Iowa State. You know, the sports information departments usually put out a little paragraph on each player listing their accomplishments. At Kansas State, they put out a whole page. <laughs> Led the nation in free throw shooting last year and may do it again this year. And Henson on target with a pair. Well, he's in second place right now. I forget who the leader is, uh, but he's up, uh, I think, at 93.1%. Hanson's two free throws, cuts the Cyclone lead of three, and then Charlie Woods expands it to five. Mark, that was a good slide by Woods. They go inside as they double back down low. He made the good slide away where the defense couldn't come back and pick him up and is able to take the shot. Terry Woods having a good day. Double figures six of the last ten ball games. And double figures again, and now a big steal. Uncontested, they give it to Mack. Selfish play right there, uh, going the extra pass. Urquhart taking it in, and left it for Mack, who went up and got the slam. And that really has got the Colton Coliseum crowd in his ball game now. 14,000 on their feet. Dobbins from three, and Sam Mack down with the rebound. Iowa State with a seven-point lead in the basketball, and a foul inside. Fred McCoy whistled for the foul. this crowd excited here in Hilton Coliseum. You see the ball win gets kept away by Bourne. They fight for it. And Terry Woods, good alert, alert play here, comes up and finally ends up with the steal. Gives it a hit to Urquhart. Watch Urquhart. Mark Urquhart pass back to Sam Mack. Mack had to get his steps right there. Took a little stutter step and then up and jammed it down. And that's why this crowd has been going crazy. Inbounds pass to Alexander. And a foul again. This time it's on Tony Massif, who just came into the ball game during that replay. Dobbins and McCoy went out for a rest. Massif and Billy Ray Smith came in the lineup. Massif, uh, a better defensive player inside than uh, Fred McCoy. Good, strong defender. Been playing well coming off the bench. 
Alexander with a pair coming. You know, in the earlier meeting down at Manhattan this year, Kansas State shot 10 more free throws than the Cyclones, but I don't think that story will hold true here today. Iowa State by nine. But Ed said Bud Light. If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. <laughs> so hard to get good help. What you get out of a project depends on what you put into your workshop. So get Master Mechanic Power Tools from True Value Hardware Store. Like their high-speed finishing sander for just $44.99 or their one-third horsepower variable speed jigsaw for only $34.99. Or get a Master Mechanic one and three-quarter horsepower plunge router for just $65.99. And their seven and a quarter inch circular saw for only $39.99 at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. America's top business managers, they're not stuck in offices. They don't work nine to five. They don't even work downtown. They're here, American farmers, using top management tools like classic herbicide for roots and all weed control in soybeans. Classic. Well, there's the story, 47-56. Iowa State with the lead, 16 minutes to go. And don't forget, Gary Thompson and I will be selecting the Ford player of the game at the conclusion of today's telecast. So stay with us. And even Associate Commissioner of the Big Eight, Bill Hancock, can have a vote with us. Hello, Bill. He's watching. He's running the show over there. <laughs> All the fans are really getting into it. Loose ball on the court. Picked up by Mike Bourne of Iowa State. I said before, this is the first time that the crowd this afternoon has been in this ball game, and Kansas State's going to have to really fight right now. Terry Woods drives open in the lane, then tries to dish off to Alexander. Good defensive play by Kansas State to break it up. And Lakeith Humphrey comes down and tries to silence the crowd. Rebound tipped out to Massive. And the Wildcats will set it up. Humphrey inside. Nice move by Lakeith Humphrey. Well, key drive, and he had a key play in the Missouri ball game. Uh, late in the game, had a three-point shot to tie the game. Foul on Steve Henson. And while there's a break in the action, here's another score we'll pass along to you. Great over Bradley in the Missouri Valley Tournament today by two, 77-75. Here's Terry Woods as he penetrates in there and does a good job of acting, I think, as he goes through trying to draw the foul. Here's Woods. Watch it come behind. I think Steve Henson comes in. Well, no, the other man gets him and rides him with the body a little bit. Second team foul on Henson, 16 foul on the Wildcats. So now Kansas State has put Iowa State into the bonus from here on out. And we have 15 minutes to play as Alexander is rejected by a tremendous block from Reggie Britt. Humphrey down, double pumps it, gets it back to Britt, almost travel with the ball. Well, Kansas State, the intensity in their eyes, they just pumped it up, it's another notch, Gary. This is where they've got to come down now and make sure they get a good shot. You're on the road, and there's the Keith Humphrey going to work. And as we said, a lot of rolls on those friendly baskets here today. A dozen points for Lakeith Humphrey. And Iowa State's big lead has been trimmed down to five. Urquhart works outside. They bring Urquhart up to the front. A good pass here, a second assist on this ball club. Victor Alexander that time trying to force it down low. Trying a touch pass. And Hanson off the roll again. Boy, the money man, you see Lon Kruger in the entire Kansas State bench coming to life right there. And uh, this is a good comeback by Kansas State. Johnny Orr, now he's going to get a title. Well, the Cyclones have not scored the last three times down the court, so Johnny wants to talk it over. We'll be back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. 
more people are stopping here than ever before. Could be for our high detergent, super clean, unleaded gasolines, or because cash or credit are the same low price. Whatever the reason, we'd like for you to stop by too. This is the place that brings you high detergent, super clean, unleaded gasolines with cash or credit at the same low price. The place that has good things for your car and a little something extra for you. A newly imported car has arrived. It comes from a company with a reputation for quality and design. And the automotive press here has already begun to praise it for its performance, styling, and value. The interesting thing is that here is Japan. And the car they're importing is the Ford Taurus. I ate a lot of stuff because it was chic. I mean, I ate raw fish because it was chic. But steaks and burgers, they make me happy. And I like being happy. I got a taste for some real food. Just a reminder, you can depend on Phillips 66, the official sponsor of Big A Basketball, for top quality high detergent unleaded gasoline, which clean up your car's fuel injectors and keep your car running clean. Next time, fill up at Phillips 66. And let's take a look at a great defensive play by Tony Massa. Well, you see Massa come over 6-8. That's his 14th block in his last eight games. You see coming here, playing center field defensively right there, comes over to help out uh, Reggie Britt, makes a great block. That's his second in this game. And as we said, three times down the court, Iowa State failed to score. Now they have a three-point lead. Ball goes to the hoop. Ball. Good move that line that time on the baseline. The Kansas State come out and jumped on defense that time, looking to trap. Plenty of time left, as you see, 13.30 to go. Iowa State by five. Mark Ball with his 10th point of the ball game. The Lakeith Humphrey and Steve Henson have been lighting it up. This time, shot misfired by Billy Ray Smith. Chased down by Ball. Ahead to Mack, he's open. But his shot won't fall. And it's saved by Kansas State. Alert defense by Massa. Good pass that time by Bourne. They're coming out of transition. He moves it ahead to Mack, who ended up with a wide open shot. And then Bourne runs over Lakeith Humphrey. He sets the screen for Henson. That's where teammates have to be talking. Got to be letting one another know about what's happening, where the screens are. Uh, screen left, screen right. You talk to your teammates so you can avoid it. Mike Bourne smiling at referee Mike Curry. They both knew he committed it. Well, Keith Humphrey has become more active here uh, lately in the second half offensively. There's the foul story. Kansas State with six, Iowa State with three. So the Cyclones will be in the bonus on the next foul. Smith shot, no good. And basket interference by Tony Massett. He touched it while it was in the cylinder. And Lon Kruger saying, oh, did he really? Well, Lon, was, Lon was checking with Tony Massett. He was asking, did you touch the ball? There you see Billy Ray Smith, Jason Junior College kid last year coming up. Here comes Mass up right there. He makes the move. The ball is definitely uh, in the cylinder. Now it's whether he touched it or not. Inside to Alexander. Nice move to the hoop by the big sophomore center. Well, he's had a great year as sophomore after averaging about uh, four and a half, five minutes of play last year off the bench. 19.2 uh, average and 8.7 rebounds. 19 points for Alexander, averaging 19-2 per game on the season. Steal by Urquhart. They won't be able to get the fast break, but they did take it away. Urquhart is giving John Hill a solid performance. They started the day, but coming off the bench, he's the only big guy they get. Great grab by Boyle. What a drive by the senior co-captain, Mike Boyle. And Iowa State back on top by nine. Kansas State made a run, cut this ball game back down. Urquhart smiles as he gets caught for the foul. And then Iowa State back the other way with the run to spread it back to nine. Urquhart, the best defensive player right there. He reaches in. Mike Corey comes in, makes the call. <laughs> Urquhart starts to plead his case and then smiles and raises his hand. Great young man. Going to med school after graduation. Came to Iowa State on a National Merit Scholarship. Wants to be a surgeon and a member of the All-Academic Big 18. Henson for three. 
No good on the basket, but Mark Ball gets a piece of him after the shot. And Mike Curry didn't like the reaction from Mark Ball there. He kept an eye on him. Mark Ball, the sophomore, uh, challenging the call almost too strong with the challenge. You know, he's done that on two or three occasions this year, and that's something a little maturity and age right. takes care of. You don't do that when you're senior. Here's Henson outside. Ball with a far side rebound. And it's still a Cyclone nine-point lead ahead to Mack. Wanted to go baseline, cut off with a nice defensive move by Reggie Britt. People wondering why there weren't shots on that uh, free throw shots by Henson. Was it because he was fouled after this shot was away? Traveling call on Victor Alexander. Iowa State has committed five team fouls, Kansas State six. So Iowa State has one to give before the Wildcats will be in the bonus. Humphrey. Britt from 15. Partially deflected by Matt. Comes down to Bourne. And Bourne will bring it up. That barely got the rim. That ball just run. The rebound just dropped straight down. Burkhardt beats in the paint to Alexander. Stripped of it, but a foul. The foul will be on Smith or Britt. We'll find out who here in a moment. Well, here's Mark Urquhart trying to find an open man. He goes inside to Alexander, and then Billy Ray Smith coming across on the healthy defense. Gets him across the wrist. Foul whistled on Billy Ray Smith as Dobbins comes back into the K-State lineup. And Kansas State now with their uh, original starting lineup back in the ballgame. Look at Victor Alexander. And I believe this will be a two-shot situation. It is for Alexander. A long on the first. Struggling with free throw line, 64.9% on the season. But look at this. In his field goals, he's 20 of his last 28 coming into this ball game. That's 71%. And Alexander, who every game comes in around 19, is up to 20 now. Fans wanted carrying the ball on Henson. <laughs> Johnny Orr even came to his feet. Look at the defense picked up now by the Cyclones. Humphrey for three points. Ball batted around, picked up by Dobbins and put in. Well, credit that to Henson. I think of Henson I saw take a swat at that ball and just kept it alive. Look at the field goal percentage falling off for the Wildcats. Shooting will take care of a lot of L's, and is doing that for Iowa State right now, their biggest lead by level. First three-pointer of the day for the Cyclone. Humphrey in traffic, and a foul called on Urquhart. And that'll quiet the crowd. Should be the second foul on Urquhart, and the seventh team foul now, or the sixth team foul for Iowa State. Humphrey will have two coming, and both teams will be in the bonus from here on out. And when Humphrey's at the line, Gary, you might as well count him. <laughs> it's just like Henson, 87.9%, that second in the, the Big Eight. He said earlier he leads Henson uh, in conference free throw shooting. Three of three today. His offense from the from the floor has been kind of really inconsistent as it is. Nine breaking against Oklahoma and three for eight at Oklahoma State, two for 12 Missouri. But the rest of the game has still been solid. His assists, rebounds, steals, playmaking. Hasn't affected the rest of this game. Down to the 10-minute mark. Iowa State by 10. Keep in mind that Kansas State coach Lon Kruger has never lost to Iowa State and has never lost here at Hilton Coliseum playing against Iowa State. Mike Bourne. That was a great drive by Mike Bourne that time. And what he did was he went underneath and reversed the ball up off the glass, took away the defensive help. Can't stay going to get a timeout. And Lon Kruger wants timeout. Oh, Harold, it's lovely. I hope you like it. <laughs> it reminds me of when he first got electric light back when I was a child. Oh. <laughs> Daddy used to draw his chair up to that light and read to us. Oh. And memories. But Harold, this is the 80s. <laughs> and I wanted a Bud Light. 
If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Kill the light, will ya? Because everything else is just a light. There's this dude from the west side they call the wizard who is amazing. Plays the middle at 6 four. Anything a seven-footer can do, he can do better. When he leaps, he just keeps going up until all you see is the bottom of his rebox. One time, the wizard did the nastiest dunk I ever seen. He went up, hit the ball two times on the backboard, then slammed back. See, now that takes tank time. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. Forget Gary Thompson and I will be selecting the four player of the game at the conclusion of today's telecast. So stay with us. Iowa State getting hot here down the stretch, leading by 12. And there's a good look at Johnny Orr, who's going after his 100th Hilton victory. And there is also Kirk Carson, who asked us to say hi to his family and his fiance. They couldn't be here today. He's one of the senior team managers. This is his final home game. Special day for Kurt. Getting married this summer. <laughs> nice to walk out on that uh, floor through prior to the game and get a big ovation. They do a tremendous job, uh, all those managers for the various teams. Nine and a half minutes to play. Kansas State with their starting five on the court right now. Henson working against Mike Bourne. Puts it up and in. And Henson now with 26. He is just one point shy of tying his career high. He made an adjustment look to me like on that shot. Mike, he went into the drive. He looked like he started to look for a place to drop it off. Couldn't find anybody. He went through and made the shot. Foul on Dobbins says he tries to guard Mark Ball on the shot. Look at the senior Mark Dobbins, number 41. Another member of the Big 8 All Academic Team hit for Mark his third straight year. And that's only the 12th time that that's been done in the Big 8. And incidentally, five of those kids have come from Kansas State. In addition to Mark, his coach, Lonnie Kruger, is one that did it three times. Tim Jankovic, Ed Neely, and Eddie Elder, and all of them excellent players. Good look at Lon Kruger. Mark Ball right now, two of three at the line, make it three of four on the day. And Mark Ball about 14 points according to my book, and Iowa State again by 12. Ball really has been sensational for John Hurst since he started starting ball games, which was 11 games ago. He's averaged just seven and a half points. There was an alert defensive play by Mark Urquhart. He tipped the ball off of Fred McCoy out of bounds, so it'll be Cyclone basketball. You know, Mark, something that I'm seeing out of Kansas State, which isn't really typical of them, even though they're down, I realize, by 12, but they're putting up the shot real quick, a lot quicker than normal. They need to come down, and they'll make sure they get a good one. And Inside to Alexander with a rocket to Urquhart. He gets the ball and the foul. Well, Iowa State is doing a great job of getting the ball down inside, attacking Kansas State's defense, and that's what Kansas State did to Iowa State down at Manhattan, just the reverse. See, you get Victor Alexander inside. Good pass away from the defensive man on the offhand, and Victor Alexander able to take it up. Back right there, a chance to convert the three-point play, and doesn't do it. 22 points this afternoon for sophomore Victor Alexander. Hanson to Dobbins for three. All next. Now he's shooting 44% from that uh, three-point strike, 47% on the year. And field goal range. Mark Dobbins playing his 94th consecutive game for Kansas State. As Mark Ball goes to the line and couldn't get it off the heel of the iron. Rebound comes down to the Wildcats. Down to the eight minute mark. Iowa State by 11. Inside. Ball stripped away by Alexander. Ahead to Mack and he's fouled by him. Sam Mack will have one in bonus coming up. Henson with his third foul this afternoon. I thought it had to be one or the other, either travel or foul, and they got Steve Henson for the foul. He's looking to concern Lon Kruger. Coming into the lineup now for Kansas State, Tony Massif. 6'8 junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He'll give a breather to Lance Simmons. There's Steve Henson. 
Hanson with 26 points this afternoon, 18 in the first half. And that's Sam Mack. Mack at one time hit 15 out of 15 against Oklahoma State. Then hit the next two. He had 17 out of 17, making a run at the consecutive free throw record of 21, but then missed. Today, he's three of three. Another one of the sophomores in uh, Johnny Orr's front line, all sophomores. Victor Alexander, Mark Ball, and Ben Mack. on the roll, looking for Hanson, finds him open from 17. And Steve Hanson has just scored a new career high, his 28th point of the ball game. Well, they just pick and pick for him, and uh, one man just can't stay with him because it's uh, so tough fight through those picks. Loose ball on the court, Alexander lost the handle. Here comes Hanson again. Rebound this time, Alexander. One of the easiest rebounds that Alexander will get. He's got a fell into his hands as he trailed the play. Iowa State, a very young team, only three seniors, and they saluted them for their final home game prior to the start of today's contest. Mike Bourne, who is one of the co-captains, along with senior Mark Urquhart, and then Hugh Suffern. And here's a foul on the floor on Fred McCoy. Do you count the basket? It's oh. Well, Iowa State really working that inside and going to their money man, Victor Alexander. You'll see it here again. They clear out to see Mack clearing the side, leaves Victor Alexander wide open. McCoy trying to draw the offensive foul that time. Gives a little cat horn. Look at the expression of McCoy as he looks up at the clock. Okay, one. Fred McCoy with his fourth foul has to sit down. And Alexander now has 24 on the afternoon. Make it 25. Well, and he's two away from his career high of 27. Iowa State with their biggest lead of the ball game. 14 points. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last to touch it, Iowa State. You know, ironically, Victor Alexander scored 25 against Kansas State in Manhattan, and he has 25 here today. He's got uh, six and a half minutes to play in this one. <laughs> Sam Mack tries to come up with a steal. It's loose on the court. And an elbowing foul on Urquhart. Well, there was some smart play in uh, there by both clubs. You see Johnny Orr is not happy with the call. Johnny Orr, former All-American at Beloit, took Michigan to the number two finish in 76. Watch the action right here. They try to save it. And then ball evidently with that right hand there were on the shove as they both trying to get possession of the ball. Lance Simmons at the line has been struggling from the free throw line, but Dobbins with a big rebound. And as he goes up for the shot, he's fouled. The foul will be on Victor Alexander. Follows on number 52, Victor Alexander. And Victor. Either way, it's going to be his third. You bet. Take another look at it after Mr. Dobbins fires here. You get a chance to look for yourself there. as Dobbins goes up. Oh, yeah. There's Victor Alexander, no doubt about it. <laughs> Victor, <laughs> got you. <laughs> Dobbins misses a pair. And that's hard to believe. Dobbins only a 57% free throw shooter. He is shooting uh, about 77% in the Big A right now. Been on a hot streak, but he looks so good shooting the ball, you can't understand why he doesn't shoot better from the free throw line. Kansas State has missed five consecutive free throws. Alexander in the ball in the paint. He better do something with it. He's standing in the lane, misses the shot, and the rebound to Dobbins. Time now becoming a factor under six minutes to go at Iowa State by 14. Inside of Massive. Outside, Dobbins. Round the horn. And a three-pointer by Carlos Diggins. That's good ball movement that time. Defense 
rotating the catch up, and they just made the extra pass each time. Oh, that's a way to cut down a big lead in a hurry. Uh, you will not see this Kansas State club quit uh, under Lon Kruger. Solid, and they've got some uh, explosiveness in their shooters from the outside. Henson and Dobbins can go set it from three-point range, and uh, also Lakeith Humphrey. Iowa State trying to get it into Alexander. Urquhart stops and fires. Rebound front for Alexander down with it. Back up and in. And he has tied his career high at 27. Well, that's a big rebound right there. Big offensive rebound. And now another foul, and it's on Mike Bourne. And see, that really is not Mike Bourne's fault. Ball is laying back there. He's got to talk to him. And that's what he can do, and he really should come up and hedge on this play. Watch it. Here's Bourne. Here comes the pick. Now you'll see Mark Ball. Well, you don't even see him in your picture there at... Uh, Right now, he can come up and help on that play and hedge and really keep Henson com coming off the pick. And there's Mike Bourne. I'm sure what he's telling uh, Mark Ball, the sophomore, says, hey, you got to let me know. you got to communicate. <laughs> Dobbins now one of three. And he cuts it down to a 12-point lead. And what's uh, a positive uh, factor there for Kansas State is that every time it's a foul situation, you go to the line, you deaden the clock. And uh, the clock definitely in Iowa State's favor. Mike Bourne working on Henson. Iowa State playing with that triangle offense. Uh, hit the three big guys. Two on the blocks and one out the... Good drive. Works his way in the lane. The basket will not count. That was a follow in by Mac. But there's a foul, and Urquhart will have a couple coming. Well, here's a good drive by Urquhart. You're going to see a, a great follow slam that isn't going to count. But it's a great play by Mack. Urquhart goes in, comes across right there, doesn't get it, but watch Mack with the left hand, and he jams it down. Urquhart foul, goes to the line for two. Urquhart hitting 76% on the year from the line. Foul was on Massup, his third for Kansas State. And it's the first time Urquhart has been at the line today. Playing his final game in Hilton Coliseum. Came as a walk-on. Came as a walk-on. Here he is starting uh, his last ball game at home as a senior. And there are several Kansas State players playing their last regular season game also. Mark Dobbins, Fred McCoy, Carlos Diggins. And they're just clearing the side right now for Henson. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, what a shot. And Henson alertly calls timeout right after that. 30 points for Steve Hansen. It's not over yet. We'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. You know, I used to think all gasolines were alike. They're not. See, I just got the car I always wanted. Fuel injected and everything. But every morning when I started, it would spit and sputter, and sometimes it would stop altogether. Then I discovered this place, Phillips 66 and high detergent, super clean, unleaded gasoline. Well, after a couple of tank pulls, I discovered something else. The problem wasn't my new car, it was my old gasoline. Hey guys, look who's here. It's Mr. Most Likely to Succeed. Hi, Steve. Nice truck. Bet it's just like our trucks. Nah, it's a Ford Ranger XLT. Has anti-lock rear brakes, electronic fuel injection. How about AM FM stereo cassette? That too. Plus power steering and 660 powertrain warranty. Okay, but who paid less? I did. I hate rear ends. Ford Ranger. More features for less money than Chevy or Toyota. Travel arranged through Eastern. Proud to lead all other major airlines in on-time performance for the third consecutive month. Eastern, we've got your ticket to an on-time arrival. And our Raycom crew wishes to thank officials at both institutions for their help with today's telecast. In Kansas State, thanks to Athletic Director Steve Miller, Coach Lon Kruger, and Sports Information Director Kenny Mossman. From Iowa State, thanks to Athletic Director Max Urich, Coach Johnny Orr, and Sports Information Director Dave Starr. Our Big Eight coordinator today, has, built, has been Bill Hancock, and Mark Ball just gives Iowa State a 13-point lead with the lay-in. And then Henson outside. Oh, oh what a jam. A jam home by Lance 
Schimmel. That keeps Kansas State right in there yet. Mike Bourne in traffic gets rid of it. Kansas State trying to trap now as they're down. Bourne trying to pull his way through and finally get a foul and it looks like on center. I think Bourne was trying to draw it. I think he was working for that foul, hoping contact would be made. And the foul is the fourth on Simmons. Bourne will go to the line. Three forty-six to play. An 11-point Iowa State lead. Mike Bourne, the top free throw shooter on Iowa State squad, three of three today. And Johnny Orr watches Cyclones out of the lane. He'll clear it, and if Bourne misses, can see the rebound. But Mike Bourne doesn't miss very often. There, Urquhart comes back in into the lane situation. Seemed like a little early at 3:46 to just uh, give up that rebound com completely. But a lot of times you worry about kids that will will go after it and uh, commit a foul. Mike Bourne with 13 points this afternoon. That's exactly the margin of lead Iowa State now enjoys. Dobbins to Henson. Henson over her card. Doesn't get it. Rebound. Sky four by Victor Alexander. Henson with 30 in the game. The last 30-point game by a Wildcat was Mitch Richmond's 30 versus LaSalle in last year's NCAA tournament. Mark Ball on the other end for Iowa State. And Ball now with 18. He's had kind of a quiet 18 points. Dobbins with an air ball, reaching in and a foul call. Who's it on? The foul is going to be on Tony Massif, his fourth for Kansas State. Mike Bourne will be at the line, shooting one and one for the Cyclones. And now coming into the lineup, Billy Ray Smith for the Wildcats, replacing Dobbins. Until that first game uh, this afternoon, Mark, when Kansas beat Oklahoma State, it looked like these two clubs might go at it again in the first round of the, the Big 8 tournament, but that didn't happen. Mike Bourne, 6 of 6. Well, Johnny Orr wanted this game very badly. Of course, Iowa State is sort of on the bubble as far as the NCAA tournament selection goes. This would be Johnny's 100th victory at Hilton Coliseum. And also, it'll sort of break the ice against the Lon Kruger syndrome because Johnny has never won a game from Lon Kruger. And Lonnie had never lost one here as a player, as a coach against Iowa State. We said earlier that he did lose as a sophomore against Louisville in the Midwest region. Foul on the rebound, and it's going to go against Sam Mack. That'll be the third on Mack. Oh, wow. Kansas State will have one in bonus coming up. Yes, third. What up? Excuse me, Mark. I was going to say that front line of Iowa State right now, point-wise, Ball has 18, Mack has 12, and Victor Alexander 27. And you throw in Urquhart there, who started it forward, uh, he has seven points. So they've really got production over that front line. Billy Ray Smith, one of one on the season. A real good free throw shooter, 85% on the year. When you look at Kansas State, it's been mostly Steve Henson, 30 points, uh, Lakeith Humphrey has 13. Two guys in double figures. Now full court pressure coming from the Wildcats. And Alexander almost got called for double dribble there. And then Urquhart loses the ball. Henson picks it up. Humphrey drives to the hoop, and it's in. And here come the Wildcats, them back at you. Well, Steve Henson has had 13 steals, believe it or not, in the last three ball games coming into this one. Down to the two and a half minute mark. Oh, nice pass from Ball to Urquhart, and he's fouled. And he's fouled by Billy Ray Smith. Urquhart's been going to that basket. Here you see cutting away as his man turns his head. Good pass right there. Billy Ray Smith comes along. Good gesture right there by Smith as he uh, holds up Urquhart. Urquhart, two of two at the line today. You know, he's had eight points 
in each of his last four ball games he's got eight again today <laughs> on the season he's only been averaging about five for a contest and he has nine today Iowa State by 15 I say one thing Mark I never expected uh, this score in this ball game to, uh, to be this high Iowa State with 91 points with two minutes uh, to go I just thought it'd be a lot slower paced game massive with a nice fake and then a move over well, Alexander fourth point in the ball game for massive Iowa State now working against pressure they call the charge on Mike Bourne. Now this was an interesting call. Well, I think they called traveling. Don't and I, they? Yep, and I think it was the right call. The defensive man jammed in the night when he turned. You see right here, he takes the ball and he jams right there and makes the travel before putting it down. And on the other end, a long shot by Massif. And on the rebound, a foul. And it's going to be on Dobbins. Iowa State will go back to the free throw line. Now Johnny O didn't have the replay to help him out on that <laughs> little uh, judgment there, but he did. He thought there was a foul, but it wasn't. Two minutes to go. One and one for Urquhart. Four of four at the line today. Three. Humphrey. Just inside the arc. Rebound sky for down. And then a foul. On ball. Three on ball. Final regular season game in the Big Eight. The tournament starts next Friday. And Iowa State will open the tournament game number one against the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Well, is that an exciting time down there at Kansas City, too? Just great basketball. You sit there on that Friday and uh, see four ball games. By the way, 91 points today by Iowa State. The most scored against the Wildcats by any opponent this season. Massive with a pair. And now checking in for the Wildcats is going to be Reggie Britt. And the long Turner, what he's doing there, he's just killing the clock. He's still batting, 11 down with 150 to go, and stranger things have happened. Now he gets a chance to set his defense with that timeout. Burkhart in trouble, looking for help, finds Bourne. Ahead to ball, all alone is Sam Mack. Well, they handle the ball well. Kansas State coming all out. Attacking under pressure, but you beat it. Uh, they're left open on the other end. Three, no good for Henson. And Ball, or rather Bourne, is fouled on the rebound. 127 to go. And Iowa State by 13. And Johnny Orr still nervous. <laughs> and we're also pleased to announce that today's Ford player of the game, actually two. We have co-players today. Steve Henson of Kansas State. Victor Alexander of Iowa State, both either tying or exceeding their career highs. Now both of them had excellent games. It's hard to, to, to pick it. If you always go with the winner, uh, you'd have to go with Victor Alexander. But uh, Steve Henson's done a great job of just trying to keep his his team in the ball game. Dave, great individual performance by two kids. Mike Horn brings two more. 17 for Horn in the game. I think he's nine of nine. Three by the three-pointer by Massif. And Henson, uh, one of our co-players of the game. Oh, correction, Henson. That's 33 for Henson. And down towards him for Alexander. 29 for Alexander. Well, the two guys are finishing up strong. Well, now it's new career highs for both. Blocked out of bounds. It'll be Kansas State ball. Well, they're on their feet in Hilton Coliseum. Final minute of play. Humphrey loses the ball out of bounds. Up to the ball. But it goes through his hands out of bounds, Wildcats. Steve Henson with a superb performance today. 
33 points. And Lon Kruger, for the first time in his career, will taste defeat coming from the Cyclones in Hilton Coliseum. And Carl Diggins with another three-pointer. He was only two for five three-point range coming into this ball game. Foul call. Going to be on Billy Ray Smith. His third. Ron Kruger still working this game. I saw him go up and says, bring it down here, score, get timeout. Mark Ball will be at the line for Iowa State. Ball today with 18 points, making 19. Now Ball's been in double figure, 10 of the 11 games he started. I don't think the Wildcats have anything to hang their head about today. They finished third in the Big Eight race, 18 and nine on the season after today. And who would have thought they'd do that well, losing four starters from last season? Yeah, oh, Diggins, Diggins takes it again. in. What a three-pointer by Carlos Diggins, his third of the game, as he kisses it off the glass. Shot. You're looking good. You've come so far, and we know how to make the most of who you are, father to son. It's what we've always done. Gillette. The, the Gillette Atra Plus system man. with the Luber Smooth strip Gillette. for the best a man can get. The best a man. Seven seconds away from victory here this afternoon. And Iowa State will climb. Listen to this statistic. Here's a neat one for you. Iowa State will go to 48 and 8 in games played in Hilton Coliseum over the last four years. That's better than 85%. Now, more important thing right now with Johnny Orr, he, his club will now have won five of the last six games to get some momentum going in the tournament. You said they're probably on the bubble for an NCAA bid. This Iowa State looking for their 16th victory of the year. Back to Urquhart, down to Alexander. Cross court to Sam Mack, and Iowa State getting a little careless, but a foul call. And Johnny Orr starting to feel this one. You know, Mark, speaking of the NCAA, I really think Iowa State, if they can win a game, a couple games in the Big A tournament, that, uh, that the Big 8 should be in a position to get five teams back in the NCAA. I think so. The caliber of competition, absolutely the best in the nation. Top two teams in the final four last year. And Johnny Orr just shook hands with Steve Henson, who checks out. Mike Bourne gives him a congratulatory wave. Henson leaves the ball game with 33, a career high. And what a performance. And it's not over yet because the Wildcats have a lot more games to play, I think. Sam Mack misses the free throw. Final 14 seconds. Diggins again, fourth three quarter, not to be. Bourne goes the other way to Sam Mack, and he's fouled. Fouled by Todd Stanfield, who came in during that timeout. Todd says, I'm not going to let you get an easy two. Well, I think Johnny Orr will probably do some substituting now, especially for seniors. And let the fans pay tribute to them for the final time. Hugh Suffren in for Mark Urquhart. And listen to the hand he gets. And Jay Goodman in for senior co-captain Mike Bourne. Bourne was 17 today. Well, Mike Bourne, when he's introduced, uh, came out with a sign and held it up and says, we love you, Hilton. And uh, they're responding now to Mike and his fine play for his two years here at Iowa State. Sam Mack with his 15th point of the day, and Steve Henson 
He just doesn't settle for anything but a win, does he? And this crowd liking that free throw because it put him at the 100-point mark. Yep. Never seen a crowd that didn't like 100 points, did you? <laughs> One no matter where you Most points scored against Kansas State this year. Mack with a steal. Goodman for three. No. And it's over. For the final score today, Iowa State coming up a big winner, 101 to 89. And Johnny Orr finally breaks the ice with Lon Kruger, getting his very first career win against Coach Kruger. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more in just a moment.